BizJet travel for economy class prices, DNA reveals the Hudson assailant, and the jetpack is back. You're watching FullFlap.tv. Ah, oh, there we are, isn't it? Okay. Oh my goodness. Shall I put this one on here then? Uh, no. Oh. Are you there? Yes, Rick and Rob finally got night flying the other day. As usual, they recorded hours of footage, so now we're having to cut it all down. So we'll have that for you next week. As a result, I'm going to have to rattle through some of the stories people have been talking about this week to get you fully up to speed. So hold on tight. I've always been curious about the cost of BizJet travel because, frankly, it always seemed that it would cost tens of thousands to go anywhere, right? Well, this story blew me away. You can get a proper BizJet flight to a proper destination in one of these for 199 British pounds. That's about $285. In fact, just before the show, I went on their website and found a flight from London to Paris for 199 pounds on the 4th of April. So I had a look on EasyJet's website. They're a budget airline if you don't know them. They wanted half the price, but you also have to add the baggage allowance fee they charge extra and another fee to get on first so you can pick a reasonable seat. All this makes business jet flying very attractive and you don't have the hassle of the airport. Unfortunately, it's not quite as perfect as it sounds. You only get an extra seat on a plane that someone else has decided where it's going and when. But for a BizJet experience, or if you can organise a few days away as a special treat for your partner, it could be fantastic. Just think, taking your partner off to the airport but then getting on a business jet. Very cool. And frankly, have you heard this story about Irish budget airline Ryanair planning to charge you to use the toilet? The chief executive says it may cost a British pound, or that's a dollar and a half, to answer the call of nature. So, being innovative at fullflap.tv, we have an alternative. We're branding it the toilet for life. It's reusable and eco-friendly. After all, you can empty it on your garden and you can share it with other passengers on our website now for just £365. That's £1 a day for a year. All part of the service at fullflap.tv. The Sikorsky X2. It's different, but is this the shape of helicopters of the future? We talked about it last year when it took off for the first time. They've now been doing a whole series of tests on the ground and say that all of those went according to plan. They reckon they'll get 250 knots out of this comfortably when it's ready, which is 32 knots faster than a helicopter has ever travelled. I'm sure you know by now that Flight 1549 landed in the Hudson after a bird strike. Well, the Smithsonian Institute have been piecing the bits of feather together. They obviously don't have a lot on right now. And they have revealed the identity of the assailant. It's a Canada goose, although in fact they only worked it out through DNA testing, which is a little bit disgusting. Talking of birds, if you're a pilot already, then you'll know birds love sitting on the runway right at the spot you want to land, or just at your rotation point, right? Most of the time, just like sheep on a road, they get out of the way, but the FAA are now considering the need for bird radar at commercial airports. Do you think this would be useful? And how would they report it? Like this? If you're doing long hauls as an airline pilot around the world, then India could become a new staging post for you. The authorities there think the current system is a bit of a mess and needs to be more like the hub and spoke system used in much of the world. They also hope to attract your boss to get you connecting there instead of other countries on trips in the Far East in a few years' time. Now, do you fancy a quick break for something rather fun? It's sort of flying, yeah? OK, here we go. We've seen all the footage of jetpacks, right? The biggest problem is they just can't carry enough fuel, which means they can stay up for about 30 seconds and it's game over. The other catch is the exhaust that comes out will be staggeringly hot. Well, how about this? Okay, it's not quite the sort of flying machine that we normally talk about on fullflap.tv, but it looks amazing, doesn't it? actually works by pumping the water from a float that's dragged along behind you. The float also contains the pump, so that reduces the weight on your back. It's not going to be particularly cheap, and that's why it will be mainly found in water sports centres around the world, but it does look like a laugh on a hot day, doesn't it? A lighter story now. In fact, a £1,648 story. 
33 years ago, a guy called Richard Van Grunzeven, I love the name, started his kit aircraft company, Vans, and did rather well with it. So much so, just the other day, his 6,000th kit, in the hands of its owner, took off after three and a half years of building. Now, I know Rick is going to balk at this because he doesn't have the patience to fix anything, but if you like playing with Lego when you're a kid, just like me, and would like to build something new, then a kit aircraft gives great performance for a low price. If you're not convinced, let me give you some more stats. The RV-10, as you can see, is a four-seater. It looks a bit like a PA-28 or maybe a Piper Cherokee, doesn't it? Mixed with a hint of Mooney, perhaps? But with the lowest power engine, with 210 horsepower, you'll still get 186 miles per hour at three quarters throttle, which is about 161 knots. The range is 880 standard miles at that speed, so that's Berlin to Rome, or Sydney to Adelaide, or Portland in Oregon to the Grand Canyon, or even Panama to Kingston, Jamaica in about four hours. It costs around $90,000 or 70,000 euros, which is staggeringly low for that sort of performance. Again, if you share it with a couple of mates, who you'll probably need anyway to build it, that brings the cost down to a regular car price. The only downside is that the horsepower will drink about four times the amount of fuel of a modern LSA, but it's still very good. Now, we've got a kit manufacturer coming on very soon on the show. I know Rick is chatting to them, so it'll be interesting to see if they can persuade him of the merits of kit aircraft. I don't think they're going to manage it, but we'll see. And if you're unconvinced too, or dozing off right now, it'll be interesting to see what you think as well. I mentioned Panama a few moments ago. Hi to you guys there. Someone discovered fullflat.tv last week and must have told their friends. If you've got some stories for us or videos that the whole pilot world would love to hear about, then let us know. The address is on the screen. If you're new to flying, you might remember last week I told you how you could get a discount on entry to the Aero Expo Europe this year if you register online beforehand. Well, if you have a student card, then you can get in free. Yes, this year they have a careers centre for getting into aviation jobs. Check out the full details on their website to get signed up. Is it just me or did the Detroit 3's mess up actually do some good? If you weren't watching two weeks ago, then I mentioned the car makers who flew from the same airport to the same meeting in three separate jets to ask for public money to bail them out. Very stupid. But now aircraft manufacturers have gone on the offensive and for once are promoting the benefits of flying to people outside aviation. I've dealt with a lot of campaigners in my career and it tends to be only the anti-fun brigade who get heard, so it's nice to get some balance. With any luck, we might pick up a few more pilots too. Finally, a mention for all of you embedding our show on your website. There's now an HD version, so just click on the embed button on our website and you can get the latest code. In fact, talking of website, and this guy has embedded fullflap.tv. We don't normally talk about models, but he's got some amazing large-scale helicopters on there. I'll be back next week and we'll be going night flying. Join us then. You're watching fullflap.tv. I'm Vicky Ferrer. <laughs>